for money, which means there's nothing for you to invest. So please do spend as much time as possible on quiz on 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 Quizlet doing those flashcards. And inshallah, every Monday we do a competition, inshallah ta'ala, to make it a bit more fun and uh, more engaging, inshallah. Tayyip. Okay. Let me share my screen. And obviously after we're done with today's lecture We're going to break up for the workshops inshallah just like last week So uh, just a quick question uh, How's it going with the portal And the exercises and the assignments Let me know in the chat inshallah How's work going with the portal and the exercises and the assignments is everything going according to plan is anyone struggling uh, please let me know I wasn't able to access post class work okay no problem is that is there anyone else who wasn't able to access post class work oh post class work you mean post unit oh minute let me double check what you mean by level one is different uh, post class work is that for level one Okay, so the vocabulary work is working, alhamdulillah. Okay, great. Type. Okay, then. Anyone else? So the post-class work, uh, I think you mean... Let's see now if that's for everyone or not. Okay, so you've all done your dialogue worksheets, alhamdulillah, I assume. There was a problem with the vocabulary practice. We just finished that, alhamdulillah. Okay, so post-class work is in this one, huh? Okay, so do you mean sound recognition or listen comprehension or both? So the listening comprehension seems to work And the sound recognition also seems to work So uh, inshallah send us an email We'll look into it One thing that definitely always solves most problems Is to change browsers Change browsers uh, One sister who's been studying with us for a whole level Just told us today that She changed the browsers And all the problems she had for the past couple of weeks went away Definitely do not use Microsoft Edge on Windows. That browser is uh, from the age of dinosaurs. Okay, if you're going to use, use Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, inshallah. Our poly, okay, I'll check that out. Neither worked for me, both worked for me. Anyway, send us an email, inshallah, or message us on in the group, and inshallah, we'll look into that. Type. Going back to our explanation So we have um, The grammar concept So that we said We promised last time we're going to go into more detail With regards to Okay uh, Type. So we have In terms of grammar There are three things I asked all these questions and today we're going to explain them Michel. So there are three things There are what we call personal pronouns there are things we call demonstrative pronouns. We have interrogative words, question words, basically. So what are personal pronouns? Personal pronouns, 
before we mention what they are, why do we need personal pronouns? Okay. Uh, a pronoun is a word that takes the place of another noun to give an example such as the word he or she or I or you or the likes. And the reason we use these pronouns is so that we avoid repeating the same noun over and over again. So for example, imagine you want to introduce your friend called Khalid. Okay, so you say this is Khalid. Okay, now imagine you keep on repeating his name. You say this is Khalid. Khalid is an engineer. Khalid lives in Riyadh. Uh, Khalid is 30 years old. Khalid, Khalid, and you keep on repeating Khalid. That doesn't flow right. That's that's not that's not nice. That's why languages, and I suppose all languages in the world, have what we call pronouns, which is basically one noun that is standardized that goes back to that proper noun that you've mentioned, or that per that refers back to the person you're talking about. So you would say, for example, this is Khalid. Uh, he's a teacher, and he's thirty years old, and he he he. And you would use he instead of repeating Khalid all the time. So. Just like the way we have them in English, we also have them in Arabic. Okay? Uh, so there are pronouns, there are words that take the place of another noun. Now these pronouns, they have features. They have attributes. There are things about them. So for example, uh, we have uh, multiple pronouns such as huwa and hiya and anta and anti and we've got a whole list. When do you use each? When do you use huwa? When do you use hiya? When do you use anta, anti? That goes back to the personal pronoun features. Okay, so there are certain features that personal pronouns have, just like all nouns. Okay, okay. So the first thing about a personal pronoun is the person, and this is something that is specific to pronouns. No other nouns have this feature, what we call person. First person, second person, and third person. So first person is the person who is speaking. Okay, such as I, which in Arabic we say Anna. Okay, the second person is the person that is being addressed, the person we are talking to, such as you, for male or female. Okay, so this is the person you are talking to, you say you. Okay, and then the third person, like we said last, last time, is the person that is being spoken about, not necessarily someone who's absent, the person could be standing right next to you. But he's not part of the conversation. You're talking about him or her. So we will say he or she. So when you're introducing your friend, you say Hada Khalid Huwa Mudaris Huwa. Why are you saying Huwa? You're saying Huwa because you're addressing, you're talking to someone else. You're talking to Ahmed. And you're introducing Khalid. So you're saying to Ahmed, Hada Khalid Huwa Mudaris. This is Khalid. He is a teacher. So in the conversation you're having with Ahmed, this is between the first and second person. That third person is absent from the conversation even though he's right next to you but he's not part of the conversation you're talking about him okay so we use the third person for that so again there's something like i said that is specific to pronouns and that's what makes pronouns so special and that also makes them so difficult okay another th a feature that pronouns have which all nouns have actually in arabic language is gender which is either male or female there's no third gender or fourth or whatever or the whole alphabet. No, we've got male and female, that's it. Okay, who and here. Anta and anti. Ka and ki. Okay? Tayyip. And then we also have what we call number. As in, if it's singular or plural. But, we're going to talk about that later. The book doesn't introduce plurals until after many, many units. Okay? So for now, everything within the book is all singular. Apart from things like, Assalamu alaikum, well, that's okay. You just memorize what it means, okay? But when I the words that the the, the sentences the, the way they're made up and the sentence structures and everything is all going to be singular for the coming four to five units. So don't worry about the plurals of words. We'll cover that later, okay? So now all we need to worry about is what person and gender. That's all we need to worry about. Father, طيب. Now let's go to WooClub so that we can ask the first question. And gauge your understanding. Please join the clap, everyone. So 
So once you join, inshallah, this is going to be the first question. Label the image with the correct isolated pronoun. And I say isolated pronoun because there are something we call attached pronouns, which we're going to cover after this. So when it comes to pronouns, sometimes they are isolated. As in, they are by themselves. Wait before you answer so that I can explain to you what's here. Huh? So they are isolated sometimes, which means they're by themselves. They're not connected to another word. And sometimes the pronouns are attached. They're either a prefix, they're, pre uh, they're mainly suffixes, i.e. joined to other words. So those pronouns that are attached, obviously they're going to look different. We'll talk about them in a moment. For now, let's just talk about the isolated pronouns. I've mentioned some of them earlier. So if we go back to the explanation, what did we say? We said we have two features of pronouns that we need to worry about for now, which is person and gender. Number, we'll talk about that later. If it's singular, dual, or plural, we'll talk about that later. For now, each pronoun, it ticks one of three boxes when it comes to person, i.e. either it's first person, or second person, or third person. And when it comes to gender, it, it ticks one of two boxes, either it's male or female. There's no other possibilities. Okay? And then obviously, uh, that gives us a total possibility of six, three times two. Okay? And that's what we have here in the image. That's what we have here. We have six possibilities. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have first person male, second person male, third person male, all of them singular, obviously. Then we have first person female, second person female, third person female. In other words, first person when you're talking about yourself, if you're a male, or if you're talking about yourself as a female. Second person, the person you're talking to if he's a male one or if the person you're talking to is a female one female and the person you're talking about if it's one man or if it's one woman okay now fill them out inshallah in arabic please in arabic fill them out and make sure you add the haraka at the end if it's going to be ambiguous so we don't add fatha kasr and dhammas normally we don't add fatha kasr and dhammas but if not adding a fatha or kasr or dhamma means it's going to be very similar to another word then you have to add it in order to disambiguate and make sure that two words are not the same so that I know which one you're referring to okay let's see who gets the highest mark and let me actually I'm going to enable competition mode alright let's see what points you get okay go ahead answer please It's working, right? You can answer, right? Right, let's see the answers then. You guys able to answer by the way? Okay, so it seems like there's something wrong. Nobody's able to answer? Hello? <laughs> Please type in the Zoom chat if you're able to answer or not. We can answer, but we can't submit. Okay, one second. Let me... Uh okay, try again. Tell me if it works now. Does it work now? Can you submit? Hello? It's 
disappeared. Yeah, it should be back now. Try again, it should be back. Okay, hello. Got one answer in. Come on. The rest of you can answer. Still can't submit. I think it's working now. I've got three answers coming in. Maybe refresh. Refresh your browser, inshallah. Anyone who, if it's not working, then please refresh. I've got five people answered so far. They're fresh, but it's still not showing up. Okay, one minute. Maybe this messed things up. Um, can we reset one more time? Okay, please try again. Refresh and please try again. Don't know what's happening today. Okay, so I've got an answer coming in. Hopefully it's working now. Good. Still not for working for you, let me know in the chat, huh? I'm gonna have to look into this. Still not working for you. I'm lost on. Not working. Okay, I mean, it seems to work for eight people. Um, anyway, we'll check the answers, inshallah. I'll look into this, inshallah. I don't know what, what's wrong today. Normally, work lab works. Taib, let's see um, those of you that have answered. Um, still got some answers coming in. I'll give you 10, 20 more seconds, inshallah. And then we'll review your answers, inshallah. So, 20 more seconds, inshallah, for those of you that are still typing up. Okay, type. I see the results. Okay, so obviously I did say, make sure you write it in, in, in Arabic. So, um, the difference between these two answers is adding the Hamza on the Alif, which is alright, no problem. So, Anna, okay, for everyone, okay, that's correct. So, male, first person would say Anna. And female, first person would also say Anna. So, that's kind of like a trick question. So, well done. Okay, uh, second person male is Anta, make sure you add a Fatha, correct, mashallah. And for female is Anti, make sure you add a Kasra, well done. Third person male would be Hua, not a Ha, okay, so these are spelling mistakes, not Hua, Hua with a Ha, and no Alif at the end, it's not Hua, it's Hua with no Alif, okay. And this one would be Hiya, not Hu, this is wrong. Okay, and there's no need for you to add a fatha to the here because it's not ambiguous. As in, if you don't add a fatha, it won't be confused with another 
pronoun. But nevertheless, well done. Okay, now we have what we call the attached pronouns. Okay, we have what we call the attached pronouns. What is the difference between an attached pronoun and an isolated pronoun? Other than the fact that one is joined to a word and another one isn't. I'm not going to go into detail exactly what the differences are. Okay, we'll do that later, inshallah, once we, once the picture is complete. But I just want you to contemplate on this. Okay, what's the difference between, okay, he, him, and his. Okay, so I want you to tell me the difference between those three things. If you understand the difference between these three things, then you'll understand the difference between uh, those pronouns in Arabic which are isolated and those that are attached. receives for one answer so far I'm not going to show the answer yet so that you don't end up copying each other so continue okay just one answer ah okay two answers great okay let's see someone said isolated descriptive and possessive uh not really I mean, look, I'm saying to you what's the difference regarding this, these English words. Okay, I'm not talking about the Arabic. The Arabic is isolated and attached, I know. But in English, he, him, and his are all isolated. They're all detached. They're not attached to any word. He is a separate word. Him is a separate word. His is a separate word. Okay? So isolated here would be wrong. Okay? And I don't know what you mean by descriptive. Right? Uh, possessive, that's correct. The last one is possessive. Okay, object pronoun, adjective pronoun, and possessive pronoun. No, it's not an adjective pronoun. Um, it's actually called something else. But we don't want to get stuck on the the English grammar of side of things. I just want you to realize that there's a difference here. So this person's got it correct, mashallah. His is for possessive, possessive. Him is for object, and he is for subject. Now, if you don't know what object and subject is, you don't need to worry. Okay, this has something to do with verbs. And with the sentence types in Arabic, okay? But the point is, the point is, yes? When you're speaking English, you know when to say he, you know when to say him, and you know when to say his. So you would say, for example, he is my father. Or you would say, for example, he went to school. Okay? You wouldn't say his, you wouldn't say him is my father. You wouldn't say him went to school. You know it's he. Why? Because it's the subject, Okay? So even though you don't know what the word subject is, you know when to use he. Likewise, you know to say, for example, <coughs> I saw him, and not to say I saw he. Okay? And you also know to say that this is his pen, and not this is he pen, or this is him pen. Okay? These, ha these things, the differences between these three words, they're all personal pronouns that are talking about one man or one male that is a uh, third person. But the difference is that it's all about the grammatical function of that word within the sentence. So sometimes you will use he, sometimes you will use him, and sometimes you will use his. The same thing applies to Arabic pronouns when they are attached or detached. The same thing applies. Okay? So, for example, you would say, كَيْفَ حَالُكَ And you wouldn't say, كَيْفَ حَالُ أَنْتَ As an example. You would say, for example, ism is me. You wouldn't say ism ana. Okay? Why? Because for in both occasions, yes, it's possessive. My name. As opposed to I name. You don't say I name, you say my name. Because it's possessive. It's your name. You own it. You possess it. Okay? How's your situation? Okay? Babe. So that's the difference. Okay, now let's see if you know how to write these 
uh, attached pronouns. So this is the exact same thing, but now you're going to label the image with the correct attached pronoun. And as you can see, I was trying to uh, catch you out last time by making two separate entries for male and female, but alhamdulillah all of you understood that it's the same thing. Same thing applies when it comes to attached pronoun, first person doesn't have gender. First person, it doesn't matter if it's male or female, it's always the same. But there is a difference when it comes to second person. Third person, we haven't done yet. So I've left it blank. We haven't done this yet. I could have actually asked you, but I just left it blank for now. Okay? This is what we've done so far. This is what we've come across so far. Okay? So, first person, second person female, and second person male. When it's attached to another word, how would it look like? As let's say a possessive pronoun. Okay? So we know how to say, for example, Anna. But what if you want to say my name? What if you want to say my book, my pen? We know how to say Anta. But what if you want to say to someone your book? If it's male or your book, if it's female. What will you use? That's basically the question. We got one answer question. We got one answer so far. Yalla. Make sure you add the harakat. Make sure you add the harakat because otherwise it's going to be what? Um, it's going to be what? Ambiguous. You wouldn't know the difference. The harakat is what makes the difference. Okay? Okay, we've got three answers so far. Yalla. Come on, you guys need to hurry up. I know it's first lesson, second lesson using WooClap, but inshallah you'll pick up, inshallah you'll be, you'll be quicker, inshallah. But I do notice that things are going a bit slow with the WooClap answers. I hope it's not technical issues. Yalla. Okay, so I'll give it uh, 20 more seconds, inshallah, and then I'll reveal, reveal the answer. Let's reveal the answer. Only seven answers. You guys struggle with WooClap? Time. Let's check the answers then. So results we have. Yeah. Okay. You didn't. You didn't need to write the word actually. I just wanted the yeah. Whoever wrote Anna, you're mistaken. Anna is not attached pronoun. We don't say, for example, ism Anna. We don't say kitabu Anna. We don't say qalamu Anna. We say ismi, kitabi, qalami, abi, ummi. We don't say um ana. Okay? So that would be wrong. Um, okay. So it would be ya at the end. So whenever you want to ascribe something to yourself, as in you possessing that thing or owning that thing, you would add a ya at the end. Okay? Then it will become yours. Okay? Just put a ya at the end and it's yours. Khalas? You want that house? Just say beiti. It's yours. You want the car? Say it's a yarati, it's yours. Okay? Obviously in the language, but not in reality. Then we have the uh, second person, mil, which is ka. Okay, correct. Such as kitabuka. Okay. Some of you wrote ha or hiya. No, no, no. First, hiya is for female, number one. And number two, this is not an attached pronoun, that's an isolated pronoun. And then we have kitabu ki for female, ki. Okay, not huwa and not ha. Kitabuha is her book. That is third person. We haven't done that yet. Okay? Mumtaz. Okay, anyway, nevertheless, you'll pick up. You'll pick these things up, inshallah. It's not a big deal. And the way I normally teach pronouns, as you can see, there are a few people still struggling with this. If it's easy for you, say alhamdulillah. It's not easy for everyone. Okay? And... The way I like to deal with pronouns is that you should never teach all 12 pronouns in one go. Some people, they do that. Some people, they'll teach you Arabic or Arabic grammar. And then in the first lesson, they'll give you the list of 12 pronouns. Arabic has 12 pronouns. Can you believe that? Whereas English has only 7. 
mainly got to do with uh, differentiating between male and female or the fact that Arabic also has a dual, something called dual number. Um, but some people when they learn Arabic, they try to learn all 12 at the same time, in one go. That's a horrible idea. First, get the hang of the singulars. Okay, because the most confusing aspect about pronouns is person. First, second, third. That's the most confusing aspect. Once you get the hang of that, you understand the concept of first, second, and third person, and you use it properly, yes, then going from singular to plural is very easy. You just add a letter for the most part. Okay, there's a very simple pattern there. Okay, but if you try to do all 12 at the same time, there are so many factors involved, you'll just get confused. You have to look at the person, you have to look at the number, you have to look at the gender, you have to remember all these things, if it's attached or detached, okay, how if it's going to join to the letter, it's so much involved. Possibilities are so much, you'll get absolutely confused. So let's start with these five, and then inshallah we'll introduce the plurals inshallah. Tayyip, who's had a similar experience? Who has, if you haven't done your homework, no problem, inshallah, there's still some time to do it, but I'll be sure, I'll, 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 I'll be fair, I'll be honest, that if you don't do your homework, I'm not talking about now, but just generally speaking, the homework is what keeps you on track. Okay, if you don't do the homework, then obviously things will start to become difficult, so may Allah make it easy for you. Let me just plug in my laptop, charge you one second. How can I find the homework? Is it not in the classroom link? It's in the Telegram group. I've sent a link to the portal with a coupon code that you put in. You get into the learning portal and all the homework is there, inshallah. If you need any help, please send a message to the course director, Mahat, and he'll help you out. Someone said, I definitely have, as in try to learn all 12 pronouns in one go. And uh, she said it can be very overwhelming if you do it all in one go. Nah, exactly. And the name of the game when it comes to pronouns is about mastery. It's about mastering them, knowing them like you know your own name. If you don't know them like you know your own name, then it's useless. You'll end up mixing them all up. And you'll get confused when you listen to people. And you'll also confuse others when you speak. Type. Um, Muntaz. Okay, let's go on to the next part which is demonstrative pronouns, which are way easier than pro, uh, personal pronouns, so don't worry about that. Okay, so we just done personal pronouns, okay, like we said, what do they do? What is a personal pronoun? We said it's a word that takes the place of another word. So you don't need to repeat the, a person's name. Okay, demonstrative pronouns, what do they do? Uh, they are words such as this and that used to indicate which entities are being referred to. So this when you're basically pointing at someone or something. Okay? This is when you're pointing at someone or something. Okay? And someone, I remember you asked before, and I also asked you what the difference is between Hada and Hua, and some of you were confused. And I explained and I told you, Hada is to indicate entity or the person you're talking about. Then you use huwa to refer to hada again. To refer back to hada. So you would say, for example, hada Muhammad. Huwa Muhandis. You wouldn't say huwa Muhammad. Huwa Muhandis. La. You're trying to get my attention to him. So you point at him and say hada. Now I know who you're talking about. If you walk into someone on the street and you just say to him, huwa uh, Khalid. Even if Khalid is next to you. You say, who Khalid? He's going to say, well, who are you talking about? But if you say, Hada Khalid, and you point at him, he knows who you're talking about. Then after that, you can use Hua to refer back to Khalid. Okay, to take its place. Okay? But Hada is mainly used to, right at the beginning, 
when you try to get a person's attention to something you're talking about هذا, uh, which is for masculine for male sorry and we have هذه for female okay now the demonstrative pronouns they're, they're pronouns as well in English grammar okay and um, so that means that we have male and female okay and when it comes to person we only have second person you can't use هذا for yourself okay you would say أنا you can't use هذا for something that you can't point at something that's not there you can't say هذا you can only say هذا to the thing you're pointing to okay واضح uh, طيب so is that second person uh, it's actually third person because the person you're talking about you're talking to someone else you're talking to someone else so I'm talking to Ahmed but I'm talking about Muhammad so I'm saying هذا Muhammad I'm not talking to Muhammad he's not, I'm not addressing him I'm talking to Ahmed so هذا is actually third person just like هو okay طيب um, ممتاز We'll practice that. When we do grammar practice, inshallah, we'll have some questions on this as well. Finally, we have what we call interrogative words or more easily, question words. Words used to ask questions. So what's an interrogative word? An interrogative word or question word is a function word used to ask a question. What do we mean by function word? Function words are words in the Arabic language or any other language which you'll see coming back all the time. They're very frequently used. Okay? That's why if you're learning a language you should focus on the function words because these are the words that in every single sentence you'll find them okay function words so personal pronouns are function words demonstrative pronouns are function words interactive words are function words all these are words that have specific grammatical functions and they always come back so you have to focus on these words okay and the way you learn these words or you master these words is not by memorizing them and their meanings no it's about using them using them in practice a lot because again if you memorize a list of personal pronouns the 12 isolated personal pronouns the 12 uh, possessive personal pronouns or the objective personal pronouns and the there's another 12 personal pronouns that attach to to verbs as subjects here you've got 12 times 3 we're looking at 36 words in the Arabic language 36 that look all different okay it's not about memorizing each one it's about understanding the the, the pattern practicing the pattern okay it's not about memorizing each word separately it's about understanding the pattern there's a pattern there okay so the only way you'll get there is by doing a lot of grammar practice Okay, same thing with interactive words. You just keep on practicing them. Demonstrative pronouns, same thing. You keep on using them in your speech and uh, when you're practicing as well. Now, when it comes to interrogative words, then I don't want to get too technical, right? Um, but we have two types of interrogative interrogatives. There are interrogative determinants and interrogative adverbs. Basically, to make it simple, we have those words that we use to ask open-ended questions and those words that we use to ask closed-ended questions. What's the difference between open-ended and closed-ended questions? Well, the main difference is that when you ask someone an open-ended question, the answer could be anything. When you ask a closed-ended question, the answer could only be yes or no. Okay, so to give you an example, all of you know that game that we used to play as kids, which is you're not allowed to say yes or no. Okay? Now, the sort of questions you would ask to get the person to say yes or no, those are the, what we call, interrogative uh, determinants. As in, they are the ones used for closed-ended questions. Now, why am I bringing this? Because in Arabic, two of the first words that you learn about, yes, when it comes to asking questions, are the words, hell, okay, or a, and ma, okay? Hell or a and ma. So we've done these already. Um, so we have, when it comes to hell, what do we have? We have hell anta misri. Remember that? Mm, using the wrong keyboard.
Remember that? Hal anta Misri? Hal anta Pakistani? And so on and so forth. This hal anta Misri, hal anta Pakistani, the answer is going to be close-ended. It's going to be na'am or la. You have to start with na'am or la. Na'am. Ana Misri. La. Ana Pakistani. Now contrast that with masmuka. We had question mark actually. Contrast that with masmuka. Can you say na'am? Someone says to you masmuka, you say na'am. Someone says to you masmuka, you say la. <laughs> la, it's not going to work. Same thing with kayfa haluka. Kayfa haluka. Right? This is not a, a determiner. In other words, this is looking for a, an open, open-ended answer. Okay, uh, so the open-ended is when you have no idea. I have no idea what your name is, so I leave it open. Masmuka, you can say anything. You can say Muhammad, Khalid, Abdul Karim. It doesn't matter. كيف حالك بخير والحمد لله أنا تعبان. The answer could be anything. But when I'm saying, for example, هل أنت مصري? I do have an idea. As a matter of fact. You look kind of Egyptian to me. But the problem is I'm not sure. So I'm just double checking. That's why you would ask this kind of question. Hal anta Misri? You know the sort of questions that politicians don't like. Okay. The yes or no questions. Right. So hal a. These are four closed ended questions. You can't answer them with an open ended question. You have to start with na'am or la. Whereas things like masmuka, kayfa haluka. It could be anything. Okay. Um, so closed-ended questions are those which can be answered by a simple yes or no, while open-ended questions are those which require more thought and more than a simple one-word answer. The reason I'm telling you this, and some of you might think it's a bit over the top, but the reason I'm telling you this is that, you know, if someone asks you Masmuka or al anta Masri or like or the likes, then you need to know how to answer the question, right? You need to know how to answer that question. And all of the interrogative words you're going to come across, generally speaking, they can be put in one of these two categories. Either they are determiners, i.e. they're looking for a yes or no, or they're just adverbs as in, you know, the answer could be anything. Okay? Type. Now, let's do a bit of vocabulary competition first, and after that we'll do some grammar practice. Or, actually, let's start with the grammar practice, because we just finished doing grammar. Okay? So, I'm going to send... We're gonna we're gonna start off. We're gonna start using a new app. Don't worry, I'm just gonna send you the link. So don't do not be afraid. So we're gonna do a quick grammar competition. Okay, please send live class alerts on Telegram channel and not just emails. Okay, inshallah, we will. Zakallah khair for the feedback. We will, inshallah. Abshir. Type. I'm thinking, should we just do the answers on on, on WooClap? The questions? One second. Let me look into it. Okay, you know what? We're just going to do it on WooClap. Because when we do it on WooClap, uh, there's a much more wide range of answers that you can give. It's going to be a bit more difficult, but I want to see um, what your answers are going to be, inshallah. Okay, so I'm going to post a question. Okay, and it's gonna have a blank. All right, and you need to put in. You can put anything in that blank, no problem, as long as it's correct. Okay. So let me share WooClap. All of you are WooClap, right? So let's go back to WooClap, 
and um, answer that question. So, ismi khalidun ana min. Just put, fill the blank with anything that makes sense. Everybody leave WooClap. Please come back to WooClap. Thank you. Okay, we got some answers. Okay, so we have Anamin. Okay. All right. Let's see which ones are wrong. Some are correct, some are wrong. Okay. So we have, for example, Ana min al Somal, that's correct. Ana min Canada, correct. Ana min Misr, correct. Ana min America, correct. Ana min Turkey, la. Ana min Turkey, la. Um, Turkey, ya. Ana min Turkey, ya. Turkey is the person who's Turkish. Okay. Ana min Pakistan, correct. Please don't write uh, English. Okay. You need to get an Arabic keyboard, or you need to use your phone, or you need to get those stickers put them on your keyboard your laptop keyboard or you need to use the online uh, Arabic keyboard screens or whatever but going forward we're typing Arabic and I'm in Pakistani no and I'm in Pakistan is the country you are from the country of Pakistan you're not back is from Pakistani Pakistani that is the person who's from Pakistan we call him Pakistani okay Bam. let's go to the next question then are they? Okay. The next question. Okay. Make sure you use the harakat. Eh? Make use. Make sure you add the correct harakat as in uh, the fatha or the kasas or dhammas, especially if it's going to be. Uh, ambiguous okay so I posed another question this time around the blank is right at the beginning of the question what would you put, put in that blank what would you put in that blank Okay, we have Masmuka. Okay. Assalamu alaikum. Ismi Khalid. No. Assalamu alaikum is wrong. Assalamu alaikum in this context, it's wrong. Why is it wrong? Because we have a question mark, my dear brothers and sisters. We have a question mark. Assalamu alaikum is not a question, is it? Okay. So Masmuka, Ismi Khalid, correct. Even though you have to uh, work on the spelling, okay? We don't spell it like that. But we'll get there, inshallah. We don't spell it like this, but we'll get there. Ka, ka, just ka like that? Ismi Khalid? No. Okay? And we said, Salaamu Alaikum is wrong. Okay? Tayyip, no problem. Ahsantum. Alright, let's go for another question. I'm going to need to open a, another window for that. Okay, let's write the next question. Okay, you're not meant to see this one. I'm just struggling making sure to give you the right screen so you don't see. 
Okay. Next question is. This is confusing. Can you see the screen, everyone? Close that. Okay, so the next question is. Okay, the next question is a wool clap. I'll fix the screen, but you can answer a wool clap. Kaifa, something? Ya Khalid. If I something, I call it. Haluka. Haluka with a ha. Not with a ha. Ha with a ha. Kaifa Haluka. Okay, just repeat the Kaifa. Okay, accent. Alright. Now you're going to have a, a, a grammar practice where you're going to have uh, fill in the blank. Uh, you're gonna be able to choose um, from multiple choice questions. Now let's uh, practice. Do a bit of. Uh, let's do this question, which is gonna test you on the correct interrogative word to use. Okay. So how would you answer this? Something in Siyatuka and a Turkey. How would you answer that? Okay. Ma. Men. Ah, someone said men didn't see you. No, not men. Men is wrong. Imagine see you took. I will explain that another time why it's wrong, inshallah. Okay, move test. Uh, let's do one more. Last one. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can find you a good one. Okay, this one looks alright. Okay, so man hadihi. How would you answer that? How would you put in the blank? Okay. Okay. Uh, let's show it as a word cloud. Okay, we have Hadihi, Sadiqati, we have here Sadiqati. Hada Sadiqi, no, you can't write Hada Sadiqi. You already have Sadiqati written here. Plus, it's Hadihi, by the way, it's female. Hadihi, uh, just misspelled. Okay, man hadihi. The correct answer is hiya. Hiya sadiqati, not hadihi sadiqati. The person is already pointing and asking you, man hadihi, who is this? Your answer needs to be hiya sadiqati. It's not like, who is this? This is my friend. La. Who is this? She is my friend. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, seems like a lot of you, uh, I caught a lot of you out on that question. Which means, 
It's worth trying another one. See if I can catch you out again. Uh, okay, this is the last question. No, actually, now we're done with that. Now that's it, that's it, khalas. We'll do now a quick Quizlet vocabulary competition, inshallah. Um, let's do Quizlet. Bismillah. So I'm going to send you a link. We're going to do a vocabulary competition. We're on level one. Okay. Yeah, when it comes to Arabic keyboard, you'll get used to it, inshallah. Don't worry. You'll get used to it. It takes, it takes a little while, but you'll get used to it, inshallah. Sorry, my laptop is just too slow today. I'm starting. Is it lagging? Okay, so let's do a classic live. individuals uh, definition and term okay so uh, use this link inshallah to join I just posted the link Okay, just use whatever name you like. Let's see who's going to be our vocabulary champion for this week. Okay, who's still trying to join? Okay, we'll start in five minutes. We've got 18 people in Quizlet, 25 people, 24 people in Zoom. Tayyip, all right, let's start. Three, two, one. Okay, three, two, one, go. Hedgehogs, koalas, hedgehogs are ahead, mashallah. Hedgehogs are still ahead. Camels are catching up. Hedgehogs are still ahead, mashallah. Camels are catching up. I think Hedgehogs is going to win. Okay, one more round and we'll wrap up with that. The teacher's waiting for us in the workshop. Okay, three, two, one. I'm going to do three rounds, so best out of three. This time, head jokes. I can't see head jokes. I'm going to head jokes this time round. Foxes are the head, mashallah. Foxes are the head. Oh, it's funny. Normally, 
Mm. Alligators, foxes, hedgehogs trying to catch up. Oh, foxes out of it. <laughs> Last question, really. <laughs> Mashallah. Ascent. Type. Okay. Inshallah, next time we'll do best out of three. We're going to go to the workshop, inshallah. Now, uh, like I've said last time, I've particularly told the brothers, I hope I've said this out of the sisters as well. Every Monday, first thing you're going to do is reading fluency. Okay? So you have from Friday or even before Friday, those three, four days, to make sure you get to a level whereby you can read the text fluently. So that on Monday, you can have your turn reading the text and teacher will assess your reading fluency. Okay, so please keep that in mind. Like I said many times before, you will not be able to speak these uh, sentences fluently if you can't read them fluently. Do not underestimate it. Okay, so inshallah, we're going to go to the workshop and I'm going to be assessing your reading fluency and Ustad Asara will also be assessing your reading fluency. So if you are not ready this week, no problem. We'll overlook the first week. But going forward, inshallah, it will be assessed and it will be logged and we will see how your reading fluency is progressing, inshallah. As we progress through the weeks, okay, and you'll do other things as well, inshallah, in the workshop. All right, type. I'll see you all in the workshop. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Please do reply to the email you get.